Hey, Vito. Yeah, buongiorno. This is uh, Vito, big ass car holder number one. Go ahead, Vito. The person you're trying to reach is bald. You know, please try your call again. Call Billy in here, would you I, please? You know, I didn't want to, and I, on that call, I was ready to. Yeah. To say, please, could we speak to Meat Fist? What are you doing to us? It looks like Dolly Parton just walked in between Billy and Rory. Do you need Al back on the phones? No. What we haven't that? had a good phone day uh, post Al. I'm oh, sorry about that. Did you honestly think that was a good call and worthy of getting on the air? That uh, veto Vito. call? Uh, he didn't do that to me. Card holding number one. He didn't do that to me. He didn't do that when I talked to him. You what? typed him up as Vito. Yeah, are, but he didn't do that. Are you voice. drinking again? I heard you Friday night. Are you drinking? No, that was... Ah. Ah. Sweaty news update. Billy, you're up to your armpit in these calls today. You can't keep up? I'm trying. I'm doing my best. Trying and your best isn't what we're looking for. We need somebody who can handle those phones. Did you take your manic medicine? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Um, took your my medicine. Selexa or whatever it's called? Selexa. Yeah. yeah. Well, I took that this before I left. Is Jeremy morning. right about you? You're not up to this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah, you know, guy... there's big changes in the station. All the shows, mm -hmm. we're going to add a couple of people on our show. Mm -hmm. Should we add one extra? Stop gulping. Go -huh. Go -huh. And Roy, here's your problem. Since you shaved your head, I confuse the two of you. I'm a little lighter than he is. <laughs> I know, but, but right look... now, breast size is all we're going by. You look like the Nimnut brothers over there. One after the other, you're looking nuts. A couple of cue balls. What's what do you need, Billy? Do you what need... do we need to get you back on track? Um, nothing. I don't think. I thought nothing. The... I don't think. No, I don't need anything to get. I think I'm pretty. I'm on track. No, the call's Billy today. We need you. We need you back running the phones. Are you still? Is what Jeremy told Ronnie and I today still playing on your mind, oh, and it's hurting your concentration at your job? Well, it's not hurting my concentration at my job, not at all, because... Uh... When Jeremy said to us, if we get your guys a hotel room, you know, because they got to work double shifts, uh -huh. will Meat Fist abuse it? Of course, you know, of course it does, because, you know, he doesn't know me outside this radio station. I'm professional. I'm on the road all the time. With I'm sorry. Economist. Isn't that where your boss should realize, should no, know you? No, I mean, my persona and whatever, I'm a professional. You're I never on the road. Me. You've only done three shows in the last year. Well, since I've been here, but I'm just saying, before that, I was on the road a lot. Where did you travel? Where's the furthest big gig you did? North Carolina. Where did you play? Uh, Raleigh-Durham. Charlie Goodnights? Yeah. Who booked that? Uh, Tony Camacho. All right. So you got one, you work one legitimate club in the country. Uh, outside of New York, yeah. No, did you headline? No, I middle. Who headline? Bob Levy. And then uh, Bob Levy during the week and uh, another girl on the weekend. I can't remember her name. Uh, anybody but Staples is headlining. <laughs> <laughs> well, we won't have Levy this weekend. Me, me. Who can we get? All right, me, we, we need me. to get back there, okay? <laughs> Don't make Jeremy look right. All right, no, and won't. he's making a lot of changes. Exactly. The and triad. Our, he calls you the weak spot. Couldn't be more wrong. The triad of evil is putting together a plan for this radio station. Right now is when anyone who's going to shine better do it. I just want to let you know when that guy Vito called, he wasn't doing the silly voice. The wheat will be separated from the chafe. What's that mean? The the good stuff, the wheat is going to get separated from just the weeds. But I do think you need a little chafe in there just for texture. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Billy, uh, we replayed him Friday night, his big drunk show, where it was him and Lobster Claws. Ah! Ah! On a blind drunk date. Yeah. And uh, what, from what I understand, so many people were calling the show that night thinking it was uh, live because you don't always get to hear. Weevil, you're the guy for me. On... Uh, New York radio. That kind of alcoholism. Right. And that was the first time that show had been replayed in Best Of. Like, first time on network television. Right. Something like that. Sure. And uh, it goes <laughs> to show you, after working the steps for nine years, you're not ready to just drop off and start drinking whiskey. <laughs> what I liked about uh, the fact that people were actually calling that show 
is that everyone was ready to believe Billy had fallen off the wagon. Sure, again. They had completely bought it. Yeah, there's no way he'll stay sober. There's just no way in the world he's going to stay sober. You didn't have I'm, to uh, display any, uh, suspend any disbelief. I don't care what his shift, his little chip says. You know, because sometimes there's a, a 90 on it, sometimes a 30. It doesn't matter. It's not permanent. It's just not going to take. It's not going to keep. No. You are what you are in F up. And I know it. More importantly, the boss knows it. And uh, goes out of his way to tell Fez and I every chance he can. I don't know why what we did to deserve hearing those critiques. Here's Bob. Bob, you're on a Fez. Hi, Bob. Hi, guys. Hey, Bob. Uh, Radio Butter. Buddy. Hey, Buddy. Buddy. Listen, I was listening to the show on Friday night, man, and I'm in recovery myself. And yeah. listening to Billy get that twisted, that fast, was absolutely horrifying, man. You, you know what? Here was the scary thing about it, too. Uh, and how long have you been in recovery? Oh, uh, geez, uh, since 95. You know, uh, because when you're uh, part of the program, Fezzy, they tell you, when you start up, you kind of start at the bottom. It's not like you freshen up and kind of get your legs back. So if you're a person who had a drinking problem and you uh, kind of find yourself at the bottom and then you stay sober for a couple of years, All right. when you restart drinking, and Billy kind of proved this, you're right at the bottom again. You don't get oh. that new time of starting fresh. It's not like when you lose weight, then you can start eating like a pig until you gain your weight back. It's like you if you ate a carrot and suddenly all your weight came back. Boing. That's how Billy was. It's to, like that to all of us. You pick up the, just the way you left off and you're, you're gone inside of an hour. Yeah. Well, you know, Billy is great as an after poster. No matter what is going <laughs> on, we can always look at Billy. Weight, drinking, dental care, uh, marriage, the, sure, marriage. fatherhood. Yeah. Well, God bless him and God bless you. I can't wait to hear myself now, and I'll call you later. Yeah, call us later and let us know what you sound like on the radio. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to talk to somebody who's not in recovery just <laughs> once. <laughs> so, Billy, with his drinking show, if you, uh, with the best of, you heard that it was four lousy drinks. And like you say, yeah, four strong cocktails. drinks. Yeah, they were cocktails. Yeah, rum and cokes. But here's the thing. People go out, they have four strong drinks. Yeah. But he lost the ability to speak. He couldn't walk. He had to be carried his fat ass everywhere. This is literally what he did on the air. We're not kidding about this. This is the sound he made. Ah! Ah! That was him, I believe, trying to get out of a chair. Yeah, trying to communicate to us that yeah. he needed out of that chair. And he was with this awful woman his... that he fell in love with. Yeah, lobster claws. Uh. His pants were down out in the green room. Right. He tried to go to the bathroom. Didn't make it that far, but dropped his pants anyway. This is for... Like, like the dad who drops him on the way down the hallway because right. he's really got to go. He's kind of trying to save some time. This was four cocktails. Four mixed drinks. And this is what it ha and this is what happened. I bet you. I'm loving every second of this. <laughs> Why are you loving it, Billy? Hey, first of all, if you were married as long as I am, you'd be loving every minute of Ah, ah. That is a brain shutting down the body's functions. That is uh, attacking the vocal cords. Right. Well, they're not necessary to drink. Let's yes. shut them down. The 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 body was actually uh, fighting itself there. Mm hmm Looking for any sort of room to store more booze. Well, my legs aren't working anymore. I guess we the body can just start pouring booze into them. What happens to him? It all shut down. It was amazing and amazing how quick in the span of really 20 to 40 minutes. Hey, Brenda, Brenda, you're on Run a Fez. Brenda. Hey, Run Fez. How yeah. are you guys doing? Calling when again. I, was, I was pregnant, didn't drink for nine months, and I didn't drink for two years after I gave birth. The first time I went out afterwards, I had seven strong drinks, and I still didn't get drunk. Because probably you're not an alcoholic. Yeah. yeah Billy, no, on the other <laughs> hand... Is textbook alcoholic. <laughs> right now, the blue book that they hand you at AA has a picture of Billy's uh, on, the, on the cover of it with a big thumb up, a big meaty thumb up. <laughs> and holding a beer mug in the other hand. Bill W., they're actually calling him when he goes down there. He's Billy W. Jr. <laughs>
<laughs> Billy, Billy Weeble. W. Billy Weeble. The drunken son of Bill W. The drunken effing up son of Bill W. This is going to be a great movie for him. <laughs> the new Billy W. adventures. Get a hold of Billy's uh, agent. He should be at Cat's Deli. <laughs> <laughs> Broadway Danny Rose? Yeah. He's, he works as a busboy at Cat's Deli during the day. And then at night, he's getting Billy gigs. Like Charlie Goodnights. <laughs> Three years ago, he works Charlie Goodnights. And we still have to hear about that. Sure, of course. Hey, Dave. Dave I was huge in Raleigh. Oh, yeah. They love you there. <laughs> you're the biggest thing since a &M. Hey, uh, Dave, you're on Run of Fez. Hey, Friday. Dave. Hey, buddy. What's up, buddy? But Listen, I, I, honestly, I've been using for 16 years. Right. A little, little of everything. Well, now, what do you use? What's your, what's your drug of choice? Uh, smoking a weed. Yeah. You know, drinking a little bit, a little, mm -hmm. little blow. You know what I'm that saying? That doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make me a bad person. Here's the, here's the deal. Because I use, I don't abuse. That's the deal. I think uh, recovery's overrated. Uh, yeah, but you see, you're a different personality. Exactly. If Billy could just, you know, do a couple blasts and be all right and then walk away, come down, you know, pray to God, uh, don't do it again, it'll be all right. He can. As, even if you listen to that show on Friday as it was replayed, that basically was just a few blasts. <laughs> yeah. And that's what he turned into. Guys, love it. See you in the afternoon. All right. See you later, my friend. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Billy, did you have a chance to listen to that best of on Friday? Yeah, I listened to quite a little bit of it. How was it for you? Not as uncomfortable as I thought it was, oh. as, it, and as it was the, the day after. Yeah. That was really, really bad. Hearing so now it, you're happy with it. No, I'm not happy with it, but time has passed, and it was just a little easier. It was still very uncomfortable to listen to. Now, I heard this story. Move Fat Johnny over to the phones while he's in here with us. All right. Johnny said, I'll do anything for you guys. Do it. If you don't call me that name. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's not his name anymore. Just was Johnny. the deal. Yeah. Now, I heard this over the weekend. That uh, or Friday, that you the only reason that show finally played in Best Of is because the former producer of this show, you would always go to him crying, saying, Please don't play oh, that. Is that in right? Best You're of. telling people what to keep off the air here, Billy? Well, I requested him. I just said, Oh, I said, If we have no uh, reason to, please don't ever play that again. Well, that's what I just said. That's no, I didn't. I didn't cry to him. I, I had, had some tears. Cry. I heard oh, almost in tears. Anytime somebody goes, "Hey, that's a great show. Don't play it." That's crying. <laughs> now, who told you that he was crying when he did it? Rory. I believe Rory. <laughs> I believe Rory with his cigar burned face and his shaved head over the weekend <laughs> and his eye slits. I want you to look at Staples, Rory, because that's you in another thirty-three years. You got the haircut already. They both had their heads shaved. When you're 58, that's what you're going to look and act like. That's very scary. Well, that's the way you're headed. You feel good about that? No, I feel Is that horrible. what you want? I'm going to stop drinking right now. At 25, I was better off than you are now. That's the ghost <laughs> of Jack Daniels' future staring at you right there. But I do like the fact that the very first opportunity you had to play a best of, you threw that. Right. You, you threw, threw him on. under the bus yeah. and threw that tape in. Billy, when you hear that, are you glad you are uh, you quit again, or you feel like you could still go with it? Uh, after hearing that, definitely. Because there like, for a while, you felt like you could handle it. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I was like, uh, hearing my excuses that night was so ridiculous. Hearing it now, I was like, what the hell was I saying? All right, now, do you remember even after that, you were trying to say, uh, I'm just going to have beers. You kind of hid it from us after that. How many times did you party after that? Just that one weekend. I had that one le the one I took my extended vacation. I was, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You just, came in all high and everything. We had that, to send you home for a while. Well, no, I wasn't high at work. Yeah, you were kind of hung over and high. Like right. this kid was today. I'm not going to lie to you. The difference, Roy came in late today, eyes looking like a Chinaman, head shaved, cigar burn on the face. But the difference is he's 25. Mm -hmm. Where you come in that way, him's like, hey, young man, you better get it together. You, it's like, oh, you're pathetic. <laughs> you're a mess. What a difference a couple decades makes. <laughs> Yeah. No, but I've never come to work high or hungover or anything, so. So did you? Unless you count the Valium you're eating. And you're still Valium. getting them, right? No, I'm not, actually. I haven't seen the uh, doctor in a couple of months. Such a liar. No, I haven't. Seriously, you come in lying and you lie all day. Now, don't you have a pending lawsuit against the Long Island <laughs> Railroad for your head injury? And you've now just said you're no longer under a doctor's care? No, I'm not under my psychiatrist's care. <laughs> Why not? 
Because I just haven't had a chance to see him because I don't have a car. Either I, either I, still go pills, to my therapist. Right? I still go to my therapist. Though. Either way, you're helping the defense. Now, your therapist, is that the Budweiser? Is that what you call your therapist? No, 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 no. This is a real woman. I got to pop open another therapist. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do a 40 of my medicine tonight. <laughs> get, 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 get. How do you feel like that's helping, Bill? Oh, it's helping a lot, the therapy, not the Budweiser. What do you say in therapy? Run and feather mean to me? <laughs> No. Not, I, got I know. I would love to hear that. I like to talk I keep to your, getting cold meat fists. I like to talk to your therapist on the air. Oh, I don't know if she is she by uh, You don't even know if she's real, right? Of course she's real. You think real. you got some kind of a John Nash thing happening. <laughs> she's Lady Budweiser. But, but Billy, the cash Billy, the checks I give her every week. Billy came in crying going like this. My therapist is not getting any older. <laughs> John Nash. What is wrong with you, Billy, that you have a pretend therapist? No, I have a very real th therapist. Is this the therapist, the same therapist that was doing the marriage counseling? Yeah, this was the first one. Wow, what a winner that is. Gee whiz, what a winning streak she's on. Well, she saw uh, me and uh, the missus for two times, and she goes, uh-uh, you guys are not working out together. I need to see you separately. Yeah, you had a color sure, magia with that hitting streak. What'd you do, double the paychecks? She gets paid twice now, seeing you separately? Yeah. Yeah, you fell for that. I don't pay for anything. I got insurance. Psycho insurance? Yeah. It's called mental health. He's part there. of the John Nash fund. Exactly. The uh, the insurance is as real as the doctor. <laughs> All I know is somebody is cashing the checks I write, so she's very real. What checks? You I don't have a checkbook. <laughs> yeah, I've got a checkbook. Right, and Billy Staples owes you money on a piece of uh, <laughs> shopping bag. It's not a check. <laughs> I have two checkbooks, Ronnie. And I'm they're sure both very real. One belongs to your mom. <laughs> now, that's the credit card. All right, I'll tell you what. Why don't you take this new issue of People and try to find out when the terrorists are going to hit next? <laughs> I am a lot more together than you think. You'd have to be. You you're literally in... would have to be. Today you're in here complaining that the boss has a low opinion of you as you stand in front of us in a bright green Camp Upchuck shirt. Just trying to brighten everyone's day. <laughs> Little Leon, we're going to be here early. I figured I'd wear something bright and peppy. His, uh... No, you're not an idiot. You're a graduate of Camp Upchuck. Here's Mike. Mike, you're on Ron Fez. Hey, Mike. Hey, Ron Fez. Welcome to Middays for a little while. All right. Thank you, buddy. But I... And I just want to say, remember O and A were doing that uh, cocaine paranoia horror stories last week? Yeah. And um, uh, that's not my experience, but when I was listening to uh, Billy Staples and I Quit Booze, I, I started feeling like, like I used to with the hangover and the shakes and stuff. Billy, actually, I'm proud of you, man, for uh, quitting because you sounded, I mean... I've heard of guys drunk, but you were foobar. I yeah. mean, you could not form single words. Not he even drinks crazy. at the foobar. You would just say, I love <laughs> this yeah. girl. Sounds it's like I was going so slow motion. You know, the other weird thing is that even though we cut you off after four drinks, you kept getting drunker. I don't know whether your digestion has... That was four drinks? Yes, that was yes. four cocktails. Oh four rum and cokes. And they were light. Well, they were, yeah, they were light from all the white rum. <laughs> they were very wow. strong drinks. And then we were slamming them with slam time. So what, Billy, do you like it? Yeah, but, Billy, you know back in the day you could have drank a lot more than oh, that. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Before the surgery, when I was at my prime, with a couple of a couple lines going. No, you should have gotten your liver stapled. Now, prime, is that your before your first rehab or at, before your fifth rehab? It was in between Where was rehabs. Was, Where do you really think your party in prime was? After my first rehab, before I went away for the first time. Before I went, uh, my first one was outpatient. Yeah. And then, Did you uh, ever believe during the first five times that maybe this will be the time that you take? Oh, yeah. My first uh, my first away rehab. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, then when I went to an after patient after that, I was sober for eight years. Sleep I away I, rehab. Yeah, I thought I was like, oh, I got this thing. All I right, got so this after being out. sober for eight years, what did it feel like falling again? It felt I great. <laughs> did it really? Yeah. Just like you feel the, the warm numbness going, and you're like, because after the first drink, you're like, okay, you screwed it up anyway. Right. It's gone. You know right. what I mean? So it was real hard before you drank. Yeah. yeah. But as soon as you start to feel that buzz back on, it's like, this yeah. is wonderful. It was like, you know what? Okay, you screwed it up. You broke it. And then after that, it's very easy to go back. All right, we're going to try to get Billy drinking this week. No, God. Yeah, no. let's do it. <laughs> Ron and Fez, 1027 WMEW.